All right, so I'm making this video for people who join us on Skype using a Blue Yeti, or really any microphone, but in this case, the Yeti will be the one that we're talking about. Most importantly, an Apple Macintosh of some sort. Really, any Macintosh applies to this instructional video. This is just one example of it. So the reason I'm doing this video is because Macintosh seems to not necessarily play as nice, or at least as smoothly, with the Yeti and other microphones as Windows does. And I'll walk through you, with you how to get around it and what the various steps are. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my cord here. I'm going to plug it into the Yeti. As you can probably see, the red light is not on. It's not plugged in, that's why. So I plug in one end into the back of the Yeti, the bottom of the Yeti, and then the other one into the back of the computer here or wherever on your particular computer your USB ports are. And now as you probably can see, the red light is on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera on over here so you can see what to do on the screen. So the very first thing I want you to do once you've plugged in the Yeti, as I adjust the camera here a little bit, is to take your mouse and go over to the Apple icon. Go down to System Preferences, and then you'll see here Hardware, and over on the Hardware screen, here's Hardware, I want you to click on Sound. So let's double click on that. Alright, so the first thing I want you to do when you get over here is to click on Input and Output. So let me click on Output. As you can see here, the Yeti stereo microphone is not selected. And when I say selected, I mean the blue bar tells you which one selected. So what I want you to do is double-click on the Yeti stereo microphone. This is for output. I want you also to do the same thing for input. As you can see, the internal microphone is selected. We want the Yeti. That's why you have the microphone selected. Double-click on that. Go over to sound effects. Not as important as input and output. These are the two most important categories, but nonetheless, for consistency's sake, over here where it says play alerts and sound effects through, I'd move it from the internal speakers to the Yeti stereo microphone. Input, output, most important, but the sound effects also something you might want to consider doing. Just make sure it's always on Yeti stereo microphone. You don't want it something that's built in. So let's X out of that. And the next thing I want you to do is to open up an audio editing program. Now, there are many out there that are perfectly sufficient. The one I recommend is Audacity because it's a fairly simple program, but there's also GarageBand, which is perfectly usable for a more advanced user. So I'm going to double click on Audacity. And the reason why I want you to have a program like this is just in case the Skype connection for some reason goes south or your internet connection goes down momentarily and it affects our Skype interview, you have a local copy on your computer itself recording from your end that you can send to us and we can piece it together. So you've opened up the program, very simple here, stop, pause, record, play, kind of like a VCR. Click on Audacity, this is the first thing I want you to do. Click on Audacity and go to Preferences. And as you can probably see here, if you push the Command comma key, that would also work. So the Preferences open up. Now the thing I want you to look for, and in this case it has been selected, is the playback device. As you can see here, Yeti Stereo Microphone, recording device Yeti Stereo Microphone. If for any reason it's selected still on the built-in output, noted by a check, you want to change that. Fortunately, here again, Yeti Stereo Microphone is selected with the check mark. As far as channels go, you can leave it at mono. It doesn't really matter to us what you use. The file will be a little smaller if you use mono, so leave it right there. And None of these four boxes need to be checked. If one's checked, I would just uncheck it. So we've got the Yeti stereo microphone as your playback and your recording microphone. That's what you want. So you click OK. The next thing I would do, and this is before you even open up Skype, and there's an important reason why you need to do that. I would click record first. I would start the recording before you even open up Skype. So I clicked record, and as you can see, a file starting to open up. You don't see many levels because I haven't gotten close enough to the Yeti. As I move closer here to the Yeti, you probably see the levels going up a little bit. 
As I move farther away from the eddy, the lower levels get lower and lower and lower. Again, as I move closer to the eddy, it gets bigger and 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 bigger. So now you've set it up, set up Audacity. I'm going to leave this rolling. This is what I want you to do. Leave it rolling while you open up Skype. So I'm just going to drag it to the bottom of the screen now. See if we can get it down there. Still rolling. Still recording you. But I want you to leave it open for a very specific reason. The next thing I want you to do as Audacity is rolling is to double click on your Skype. Open up Skype, as I'm doing here. Wants me to open up the program. And as you can see, Skype's opened up. Let's see if my name's here. It is. And then I'm going to log in. I'm moving this camera down to the keyboard because I don't want you guys to see my password. See if it logs me in. All right, logs me in here. So you see my list here. Now the first thing I want you to do, again, like we did on Audacity, is go to the Skype section. Go down to Preferences. Again, Command, Comma would also work if you're a keyboard fan. It opens up this screen. Take your mouse, go over to Audio. And this is exactly what we want. We want your audio output to say stereo, Yeti stereo microphone, your audio input to say Yeti stereo microphone, and here the ringing as Yeti stereo microphone. If for whatever reason it's still selected as a built-in option, built-in output internal speakers, or the built-in input line in, you want to change. You want to make sure all three of these come up as Yeti stereo microphone. So we are set. The next thing I would suggest you do before you start the call with us is that every Skype program should have a Skype test call option as a default uh, option among their list of contacts. I would click the call button and do a Skype test call. That requires you to actually plug in your headphones into the microphone itself. Let me show you where that is. That's down here, as you can see. So I would take a pair of headphones. Any headphones would suffice. Anything you use to do a Walkman would be fine. And just plug it in right here. Let's see if I can get it in. All right, we've got it in. So we've done the Skype test call. We've tested on the microphone. Sounds fine. And we're good to go. So click hang up. You've done your Skype test call. You sound fine. You call to meet your eye. Again, making sure the Audacity program is rolling. And then as far as distance goes, I'm going to put the microphone back here. You've got your Yeti here, and again, you're rolling on Audacity. As far as distance goes, I would be about this distance away from the microphone. I wouldn't be any farther back. This is too far. I wouldn't necessarily be this close, because that's a little too close, though we could live with it. This is about the distance I would be away from it. So I would use your fist as kind of a barometer of where you want to be. Second thing I want you to do when you're talking to your microphone is to talk off to the side a little bit. So maybe angle yourself to the left of the microphone. You don't need your head here. You can still be behind the microphone. But I want you to talk in this direction towards the side of the microphone as opposed to talking straight into the face of the microphone like that. The reason why that is is your P's and your B's will be popped if you talk like this. But if you talk like this, or conversely like this off to the side of the microphone, it'll solve that problem. So I'm going to bring the camera right over here and finish up. So you're done with your interview. We've done your talking. You can see the file right here. You finish the call with Dimitri or I. Click Stop in Audacity. As you can see now, the file stopped. It's no longer moving. And then what I want you to do is go up to File, Export as OGG Vorbis. You can save it to the desktop or wherever you want, just as long as you remember where it is. And I'll call it test.ogg. That's the format we want, OGG, an OGG Vorbis file. And as you can see, it appears on my desktop right here. And then just email that file to us. We have the ability to convert that over to a format that we can put on air. So that's pretty much it. That's how you do it. That's how you set up Skype. That's how you get it to play nice with the Macintosh.